Welcome to the next video and in this video we're going to go over how to write the equation of a line given two points. Now write, write equation two points. That's pretty much what we're going to do today. Alright, so in the first example it's write an equation of a line that passes through the point 5 comma 2 and the point 2 comma 10. So what's the first thing we could do? Well, you probably already saw this one up here. We're obviously going to use point slope form. Remember there's two equations that we've learned already, slope intercept and point form. Um, so actually let me just drag that over here. Before we do that though, for point slope, if you remember from the last video, we always use one point and the slope. Now here we have two points, but we don't have a slope. So what can we do? Think about it, think about it. Probably already guessed it, but find the slope. So first step, find the slope. How can we find the slope? Who remembers? Mm -hmm. Probably already guessed it. Use the slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember, it doesn't matter which one you pick. So I'm going to say this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, and this is y2. Just plug those in. What's 10 minus 2? The y's go on top. 2 minus 5. 10 minus 2 is 8. 2 minus 5, this is a tricky one, it's negative 3. So let me just write this all down. Our slope equals negative 8 over 3. We're not done though, that was barely the first step. Now we have two points, let me circle them. One point right here, one point right here, and they slope. Now that we have the slope, we can use this one up here. So let me copy this down. Drag everything up a little bit. Step number two, use point slope formula. The cool thing about this is that we have options now. Everyone loves options. We have two points, five comma two and two comma ten. So we can actually use either one of them. I personally like number five, so I'm going to use the first point. I'm going to say x1, y1 equals five comma two. And from before, we know that their slope equals negative 8 over 3. So what do we do? We do the same thing we did in the last video. Just plug everything in. So let me write down the skeleton first. y minus something equals the slope times x minus something. What's our y1? We actually just got our y1. Our y1 is... Oops, sorry. Our y1 is 2. Our slope is negative 8 over 3. And our x1 is 5. So now let's simplify this to the math. Just a heads up, it is going to get tricky. There are going to be fractions involved in this case. So y minus 2 equals, distribute this, distribute this. The first one is pretty easy. It's just negative 8 over 3x. This is where it gets tricky. First, we know that we have a negative here and a negative here, so it's going to be plus. Now we have fractions. So let me actually just write down everything. 8 over 3 times 5 over 1, because it's quite the same thing, right? So let me write down everything again. y minus 2 equals negative 8 over 3. I almost forgot the negative. x plus, you multiply straight across. 8 times 5 is 40. 3 times 1 is 3. Perfect. Let me move this up a little bit more y minus 2, actually we can add 2 to both sides, plus 2, plus 2, let me erase this part, so now you get rid of this part, y equals negative 8 over 3x plus 40 over 3 plus 2. Oh my god, it's getting tricky, we have a fraction plus a number, we've all done this before, we can do it one more time when we do it with you. So the first thing you want to do, get a common denominator. So y equals negative 8 over 3x plus 40 over 3 plus, let me write this over here, 2 is equal to 6 over 3. Remember because I just multiply the top and the bottom by 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 1 is 3. So plus 6 over 3. Let's keep going. This is a long one. I gave you a heads up, but I want to do this really complicated one because you're going to start seeing these in the type of problems. 
So when you're adding fractions, you could just add straight across. So 40 plus 6 is 46 divided by 3. Remember, the bottom C is the same. And that's pretty much it. You can simplify here. Sometimes you can simplify a little bit more. In this case, you can just leave it like that. So that's all we want. So now, if you really want to go hardcore and get those extra points, um, you can actually graph it. But it looks like we don't have any space for that. So again, let's, let's just review everything. This was a really complicated problem, I understand. But here are the steps. Step number one is identify the slope. How do you identify the slope? Use this equation. Handy dandy equation, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Step two, use point slope form. Remember point slope form, or the point slope form is equal to y1, y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. And step three, you can if you really, really want to leave it like that, but I really like it when people write like y equals mx plus b. Because it makes it easier, you can graph it, and some questions I'm going to ask you to graph it, and you always just want to have that in the back of your head. So remember, step one, identify the slope. Step two, use the point slope formula. Step three, write, slope, write it in slope intercept form. So go ahead and do the, the classwork. Good luck. I know this one's going to be tricky. There's going to be decimals. There's going to be fractions, but I know you can do this.